I'll uh, announce that this meeting is being uh, video recorded and audio recorded. And there is a quorum here this evening at the Northampton Housing Authority for the regular meeting of uh, November. Um, and I will ask then please for the secretary to please call the roll. Yes, uh, Madam Chair, Chairperson Carney. Present. Thank you. Vice Chairperson Richards. Present. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Brooks. Here. Thank you. Commissioner Tarbutt in Springfield. I am here. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Cancel said that he may not be in attendance or may be late. And uh, I do not see Commissioner uh, Jones yet. Okay, thank you. Well, that means we do have a quorum. And as as uh, Director Lieber said, we did hear from Commissioner Cancel that he's unable to attend tonight. And so hopefully we'll hear from Commissioner Jones. So um, tonight we do have a number of things on our agenda, including, um, well, the budget, which will come up under new business. Um, we also have a board review of a grievance that this board will be listening to. Um, and that will happen after we hear- Pardon me, Pardon me Madam Chair. Um, if the record could show that at 5.31 and a half, Commissioner Jones um, joined the meeting. Okay, hello. Hello, Commissioner Jones. Thank you. Hello. Thank you. So um, as I was saying that we have a number of things on the agenda. Um, before we actually have the, the uh, public comment, um, and now we will in the future have this change to say public comment because we did change that at our last meeting when we <clears throat> when we approved the bylaws, but that will include the tenant staff and public comment now all under one category of public comment. That will happen after we hear the uh, review of the um, M punch grievance. After that, we have an executive director's report our regular uh, approval of the minutes, some unfinished business to talk about the agreed upon procedures that's been a regular um, item on our agenda the last number of months. And then finally, as I mentioned, we'll hear a, a quarterly uh, budget um, presentation by Gary DePace. So that being said, I think we move directly to the first item of business, which is the board review of the M Punch grievance. And I believe that um, <clears throat> Commissioner Richards, or was it Commissioner Brooks was the chair of that and is presenting. Director Lieber, do you have an answer um, to that? So, so the pan the hearing panel uh, was uh, Commissioner Richards um, as the chair, uh, but I don't see um, resident Mr. Uh, Punch here. Um, typically, uh, that person would um, be present. Um, and since our attorney is now uh, here as well, I would need to ask his uh, advice as to how to proceed since he's uh, since the grievance is not here. Um, uh, thank you. Good evening, everybody. I actually reviewed the, the reg and the language in the grievance policy. And oddly enough, it doesn't require his presence. So I think we need to go forward with the uh, um, with the. Uh, review of the decision, even though he's not here. Okay, thank you. Hey, okay, thank you. Then, I guess um, would that be then, Commissioner Richards? Would you be um doing this presentation as the chair of the grievance panel, even though you're muted? Sorry. Yes, I'm happy to do that. Thank so, you. um, I do have a question for um Attorney O'Connor. Uh, if we were on the grievance panel, do we uh, also participate as board members? Again, there's nothing that says you you don't. Okay. So, okay. Um, I'm just kind of going by. This is I've been around over 20 years, and we've never had one of these. So this right. is right. this is the first one. So I don't see any reason why not. Okay. Um, well, uh, before that... before we go ahead, um, Commissioner Richards. Um, Commissioner Tarbutton, do you have a question for yes. before we start? Yes, yes, I you... do. Uh, yes, but... well, uh, yes, I do have a question. Almost request. We, we we're not even sure if he's on his way or not coming here. Can do we have to deal with this right now? Can't we just let like we always do, Gary DePace go first? It's fine with me if we reorder the agenda 
Um, I'm happy to move directly into uh, public comment, which is the next item. And then after we're finished with the public comment, move then at that point to see if the grievance has shown up and then have the have the process at that point. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'll ask then um, Director Leeper um, if you could help us then uh, mediate the uh, public. Sure. Um, okay, so we're moving to, uh, I don't, I don't see uh, the LTO here, which would be your first order. Uh, so uh, let me look at my screen. And I, I have... think what works best yeah. is actually if we have members of the public, all raise their hands if they'd like to make comment. And then we can just go by the hands. That way, we don't have to ask everybody if they have a comment, but we just defer to those with the hands raised. Um, I, I'll raise my hand, but I was hoping someone else go to it because I wrote it out and I wanted to make sure I get it. But of course, we have another uh, hand raised. Oh, let another person go, please. Uh, Casey, if you'd like to make your public comment, please go ahead. Um, yeah, Casey, I live at McDonald's. Um, now we, you know, we've had several things happen recently. I was looking back on my notes sometime back the people came and checked to see everything was working and so you know there were things that didn't work i had had notes for them and they you know for sure said yeah none of those things work no one's gotten back with me none of those issues have been addressed now the pest control came in and first thing i know is the property manager helped herself into my apartment i did not know that the pest I mean it was just weird I did what the letter asked I you know made the counters accessible and and then she comes out and writes a letter with you know citing this code and that code and the other and and it she did it for several people and it caused undue stress and anxiety and it was it could have been handled differently I think it could have been handled differently. I'm wondering, I'm very curious to know what kind of human rights training do the employees have? I'm really interested in knowing that because sometimes I feel like we're treated less than. It's, you know, it's a bit much sometimes. So if y'all can let me know, you can let me know next meeting. I would like to know exactly how they, I mean, I, 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 I dig that they're able to cut and paste with the letters and say, cite this and that. Um, but what is their training in working with humans? That's, that's what I need to know because there's, there were a lot of, uh, there's a lot of anxiety invoked because of these, this woman waltzing in. Her name is, oh uh, God, help me. Uh, uh, she's new. Um, I'm blanking on her name, but uh, Sanchez is her last name. So yeah, y'all just let me know because it it's really, it raised a lot of, you know, anxiety. She threatened people. It's not cool, y'all. It's just not cool. And that's my opinion. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Casey. I think you're on um, the other hand now. Next person raised with a raised hand is... Uh... Joella Tarbot in Springfield. Okay. I still can't find my notes. Wouldn't it have, wouldn't that be the case? Firstly, I want to thanks for the opportunity to speak. Uh, I, without naming names, I am very uh, heavy hearted tonight. So we're one of my quite dear friends. And so that's why if uh, okay, I will be, um, not having my video on today. Um, I had uh, written out something and I wanted to make it uh, uh, more sanitized. So, and unfortunately I can't find it, but I will eventually send it to the, um, uh, the chair. So I'll have to go on my comments and I, I have a way with being tangential. So I'm uh, um, asking for forgiveness now. Uh, one of the questions that I had was, um, last month's meeting uh, was really impactful. Uh, and there were some 
uh, issues that were raised that I think that should, that actually, believe it or not, I'm so in agreement with that we, the concerns about um, the, a, a tenant or raised about um, having an investigation to come in. And uh, I do, I'm in support of that. I think our board needs to listen to our tenants um, and to uh, follow through on that. Um, um, sorry. Uh, I do agree, because I've been living here for 10 years, that there are many residents and tenants with psychiatric issues, diagnoses, and uh, very serious and, um, and some addictions. And if there is any way someone is saying that there is a bullying or if, the, if, if there's someone involved in that, that an, a, it, it, it's, it warrants an, an independent investigation because uh, lives, NHA is responsible for the lives and well being of our tenants. And um, so I, again, I'm urging my fellow equal board members to. Um, to initiate an independent investigator to come to examine these very serious allegations. And I know I've mentioned in the past, because in my trainings and conferences, and I have witnessed firsthand and learned from other local housing authorities, LHA, who've had differences and disagreements and issues of problematic. Um, and in one in particular, I think it was Salem Housing Authority, they did bring in a law firm, actually, the name of it was is called Law Firm Discrimination and Harassment Solutions, LLC. It was head by this attorney, Regina M. Warren. But unlike NHA, that one and all the one that I know of, the main complaint came from staff against a particular commissioner uh, who also served as chair, a tenant commissioner in particular. And um, I think no stone was unturned. Um, and I think that that would be be something that needs to be looked into. And, um, but the, I guess I, for me, the sad part is tenants, the tenants involvement, and we should pay attention to that. But I really hope that we are adhering to, because my feeling is that wondering if we're adhering to that legal term concept of clean hands, <laughs> hopefully those who are bringing such charges are doing so without incentives, rewards, prompts. And um, I think that, as someone said, and I agree, tenants have a lot of issues here. And many of them are prey, are vulnerable to be preyed upon, exploited, groomed. And of course, you know, we need to look into that because that is beyond a ethics violation and possibly even legal issues here. So um, and I think I really have, my concern is when one party is glorified or deified in some way, and then another party is vilified, that's red flags and alarm bells are going off with that. And so that is one of the reasons I think, and I think it goes, uh, I think it goes very deep. And I just want to know, as long as I've been on this board, it's been four years and I have never, not in these years, filed a legal complaint against against NHA while I'm on this board. Because I have believed in the mediations, the trainings that we've gone through. I think they've been very helpful. And as I've said, I've been to many of them beforehand where they have worked. In particular, one thing I was impressed upon at one conference, there was one guy, and I think it perhaps was the- Ms. Tarbutton, um, if you could just wrap up your thought, your time limit is reaching its end. Okay, I was. One, I, one person who, with their ED, they had an issue and they went to paid company therapy for one year. And they came to an agreement that they it is only the information being sent. And that's being said has worked successfully for five years. So I think we need help and we need to add, we need to be a board about things that are being brought up to the board. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Tarbutton. You do have another um, hand. GL Nabad, do you have your hand raised? Please go ahead with your comment. You're muted. Please feel free to unmute yourself. Yes, hello. My name is Gwen Nabad. And I'm speaking tonight on behalf of residents and 
in general, statewide residents in public housing, um, but also not just state funded public housing, but also federal housing and their right to organize. All tenant organizing comes from the bottom up. It doesn't come from the top down. And that's just the way it is. And if there are LTO events or meetings that are happening in the city, all are all should be welcome. Those are public meetings. There are never ever any um, private executive meetings between the executive director and the LTO officers um, without members knowing about it and being told about it in an emergency 48 hours in advance. And it is the obligation of the executive director to always, always be redirecting members, the, the officers, back to their people. And so I want to stress that the arrangement that happened with Hatfield was done incorrectly. And the LTO um, at Salvo has hinted at this, but not really, I think they feel responsible, but it would be ultimately the responsibility of the executive director to say, you have to give your people a 48 notice, 48 hour notice, because this is an emergency to take a vote. And that did not happen. In fact, it was one of the first PHNs that went out early in the year. And so I have concerns about that. Another thing is code of conduct for state officials or federal officials that may possibly under 268A, um, there is a code of conduct in terms of relationships, uh, the appropriate appropriateness of relationships, um, conflicts of interest, the state has has lots of training for that. And um, I think that uh, that needs to be considered at all times, as well as I noticed an absence of a discussion on the PMR during the annual plan for 2024, uh, well, in 2025, um, those are to be included. Um, the PMR is to be included and there would have been no confusion with Hatfield, they would have known ahead of time about this PMR that still has not been made public and still has not been addressed by the board. Uh, it's the bare minimum. It has nothing to do with operations, but what I see and what I hear about are staff shortages, um, people not wanting to stay because they find a difficult work environment. And I'm greatly concerned about residents and the safety of women in public housing. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Nabod. Are there any other members of the public who would like to offer some public comment this evening? Please just raise your hand, or if you don't have that ability, you can just visually raise your hand or speak up. I wanna thank Gwen for speaking on our behalf because it really, I mean, my aesthetic is different than y'all's, period. So that's all. Thank you for that additional comment, Casey. Is there anyone else in the public who has a comment to offer this evening? I'm sorry. I do have one urgent one. I'm very sorry. A resident called me today and said children were starting fires behind the buildings. And right now we're having brush fires all over the state. So I wanted to mention that. Thank you. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. Okay, um, seeing none then, and I think that I will continue to um, to hold off on the grievance just in case the grievance shows up. I see no harm in that. So if we just go ahead with the, the order of business as it is on the agenda, by the time we reach towards the end, we will have to go directly at that point into the, into the um, board review. So, but at this point, I'd like to move on then to the executive director's report. That's okay. okay. Director Leeper, thank you. Sure. Uh, executive director monthly summary, November, 2024. Our GPR was $248,806.95, of which we collected 99%. The delinquency uh, at the end of the month uh, was 127,661. Um, we did 70 recertifications for the Section 8 department, uh, 66 were completed. Um, federal applicants, uh, one bedroom, 99, two bedroom, 28, 
three bedroom 24, four bedroom two, and section eight had 58. The state applicants family had 25,146 applicants. Elderly disabled had 6,578. Move outs in public housing had one, section eight had four. Move ins public housing had one, section eight had three. Uh, we have two units on notice in public housing. Vacant ready at the end of the month were five. Uh, unready vacant 18 with 23 vacant total, 13 of which are pre-leased and we're processing six lists in CHAMP uh, as we speak. Uh, we completed six make readies, uh, five of which were complete rehabs. We took in 165 work orders and we began the month with 100 uh, work orders. Uh, we currently have 62 incomplete work orders, meaning we completed 203 work orders. Uh, follow up from the November meeting. Um, at the last meeting, uh, Commissioner Tarbutt in Springfield made a request for office space to conduct board business and stated her inability to use the DCC as arranged by the mayor. Um, I reached out to the DCC um, manager, Donovan Gibbs, um, and uh, sent an email and uh, received a res the following response. Um, I had said uh, that, you know, the mayor had set that up for them um, and that I wanted to understand the confusion uh, in that she wasn't being able to uh, check her email and get her packages there. Um, and he said that uh, they do in fact have a legal, legal kiosk in their community space and have asked her to utilize that instead of coming in the back where staff is not allowed. Uh, where, where staff are only allowed to utilize the space for one or more of the appointments with community members and talk about personal information and situations that are HIPAA compliant. Um, and they're constantly busy with community members that they serve and utilizing computers in the back is not a viable option. We informed her that she is free to use the legal kiosk, um, which has its own printer any anytime it's available. Um, and thanks for reaching out for the clarification and let her know that the offer is still uh, available for her to use the legal kiosk. Um, so I, that was the resolution to that one. Um, the lien incentive uh, report, we were recently approved for a lien grant um, in the amount of just a little over a half a million dollars, 551580 551580 dollars which will be used for the current and future fish projects um and that is um we received an email um telling us that we were going to get payment on that um on october 24th um we completed all of the paperwork um for that so that'll forward our capital projects um for like the projects of um for Sander and all the ones that have had to be pushed out because of the heating issues that we're having at KHEL. Um, our Section 8 CMAP score came in um, and the CMAP score uh, was excellent actually this year. Um, we received um, a 96%. The purpose of the letter from HUD, um, housing HUD is the H Department of Housing and Urban Development. Um, to inform you, the Northampton Housing Authority, our overall CMAP uh, score, performance rating system designation, um, the CMAP enables HUD to better manage the Section 8 tenant-based program by identifying public housing agency capabilities and deficiencies related to the administration of the Housing Choice Voucher Program. As a result, HUD will be able to provide more effective program assistance to public housing authorities. The Northampton Housing Authority's overall CMAP score for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 24 was a 96%. In close, please find your score on each indicator and the overall CMAP score is derived by dividing the sum of indicator ratings by the total possible points. The CMAP scores are rounded off to the nearest possible whole number as a result of the overall CMAP score of 96. The Northampton Housing Authority is designated a high performer Congratulations. If you have any questions regarding your seed map rating, please contact us, Perform Portfolio Management Specialist. So Northampton Housing Authority, congratulations in being high performers for HUD. Um, 
Update of events. This month, we purchased 100 pumpkins and decorative supplies to host pumpkin decorating events to, at all sites. We provided light refreshments and a good time was had by all who attended. We also hosted trunk or treat events at both family sites and send a heartfelt thank you to all who joined the fun. You can find pictures in the next month's newsletter. We hope you check them out. The foot care nurse, Simone Westhort, visited our sites to provide foot care at low cost. We've received positive feedback from residents who have met the nurse and utilized the service. If you're in need of foot care, we encourage you to sign up ahead of time so that she can plan accordingly. The health department also hosted vaccine clinics at our sites for both COVID and flu vaccines. If you're in need of a vaccine and miss the clinics, please contact one of our RSCs for information on how to get a vaccine. Many of our families are familiar with the Angel Tree Program, which is sponsored by Hampshire County Family Probate. This year, they've changed the name of the program to Operation Deck the Halls. All households at family sites received a flyer last week with a QR code that allowed families to register their children for Christmas. Gifts and deadlines to, for signups is, and deadlines for the signups is November 30th. If you need assistance with signing up, please contact the RSC and they will be, be available to help. Lastly, we want to remind all residents that we typically insert event flyers in the monthly newsletter. Please make sure to open the newsletter each month to be up to date with what's going on in your community room. Thank you, and so ends the executive director's monthly report. Uh, thank you, Director Leeper. And so as is usual, members of the public, or uh, members of the board, if you have questions or concerns about this report, please send them to Director Leeper. If you have a comment, um, Commissioner Tarbutt, and I see your hand raised, yes, please yes. reserve the comments, please, till your comment section next meeting. We're not having comments what, on, the, on the executive director's report. of information, it was just some... Uh, I know, but please, here. please but tell us I, about... The question was for you, actually, because you have said that you would... The uh, executive director said she would give me the executive director's report. So if I had gotten that, which I did get the stuff early, thank you. But if I had gotten that information, I could have told her beforehand about what happened with the uh, DCC. And it was an October meeting, not November. And it's for confidentiality. So people all around me, they don't see our stuff. But I have made arrangements thanks to the uh, directive of the mayor's office. So thank you for looking into that. But it was October and not November. And it's for the sanctity of co um, confidentiality because it is in the front. And when I'm doing my work, there are other people who want to use the computers too. So I do appreciate them for helping and thank goodness for the community that's helping. So I wanted to clarify that. So thank you. Moving right along, we're going to the approval of the October um, regular meeting minutes. So um, uh, Director Leeper, could you read the resolution? Please. Uh, this is approval of the October regular meeting minutes, uh, correct, Madam Chair? Yes, and I'll just note that there were no additions, corrections, or deletions received by the office today. So you can just read the resolution and we'll move right to the... Um... Yes, uh, so you're just looking for a motion for the approval of the October regular meeting minutes. Yes. Okay, is there a motion from the floor to approve? So moved. Moved by Commissioner Jones. Is there a second, please? Second. Moved and seconded to approve the regular meeting minutes for the October meeting. And uh, Director Leap, you may call the roll, please. Thank you. Chairperson Carney. Yes. Thank you. Vice Chairperson Richards. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Brooks. Oh, Commissioner Brooks, you're muted. Uh, Commissioner Tarbot in Springfield? Uh, no, I didn't have the chance to review everything, so thank you. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Brooks, have you been able to... I think his hand... Can we take your hands? It's meaning yes. Okay, his hands mean yes. I don't know why... Uh, um, yeah, um, <clears throat> folks are muted while others are speaking, so I might just need to take time to find out where the mute button is on your device to unmute. Okay. Okay, so then we're moving on from there to the unfinished business, which is that agreed upon procedures. And I'll turn to Director Lieber to uh, bring us up to speed on that matter. Yes, Madam Chair, just one moment, please. 
So I received on October 24th, um, 9.36 a.m. an email uh, from uh, EOHLC, uh, Carolina Gonzalez. Good morning, Carrie. I appreciate your timely submission of the required documents, which have confirmed that the Northampton Housing Authority has effectively addressed all findings of the AUP. I am pleased to inform you that the AUP for fiscal year ending 2023 has now been completed. Thank you again for your cooperation. So we have provided everything to the state and they have closed the AUP um, that was on the agenda. Thank you very much. So that means we're all set here. Folks will no longer see this item on the agenda. Um, originally, we were told that we must keep this on the agenda until it was resolved. Having received this notice, um, we're happy to say that we'll no longer be dealing with that agreed upon procedures matter. And then that will bring us to the item of new business, which is the presentation for the quarterly financials. And I'll turn that over to Gary DePace, please. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, you should have received your package of the quarterly report and the upcoming budget. Uh, I believe the first item is the budget before the quarterly reports. Um, so I'm going to share my screen and make sure that everybody can get this. We're right here. Oh, okay. There we are. Okay. Should be. Everyone see the screen? It's a, it, I'm going to try to go through the highlights of the, uh, the budget and starting with page one of 19 um, and explain a little bit about, I start with the main topic, which is our 400 program or the state aided housing of, of Northampton, which comprises of 515 units. Um, I'm going to roll scroll down to give the highlights on page three, which is the, this is the calculation of the subsidy. Um, we've had a lot of changes this upcoming year and I know we've discussed in the past many of them, uh, but the first start is that our last year's ANUEL of 2,438,412, we received a 12% increase from um, the state bringing us to a new ANUEL of 2731021. -021. In addition to that, um, we are adding in, and these are items that next year will become part of our base, um, but it represents the addition of the Hampshire units, which was uh, the Hampshire's budget was 210,673 plus the 9%, or to a total of $235,954, which gets added to our budget. We also get our retirees health insurance, an exemption, which that 57,336 has been a standard number probably for the last 10 years um, that gets added on. And then we did have a reduction this past year uh, because we did sell one of our 705 units. Um, I believe we sold it or just or d demolished it. Uh, so we did have to reduce our ANUEL by that operating cost of that one, one unit, 9,322. As we go down, you're gonna- you just next, remind me what that 705 yep. is, please? Corticelli Street, Corticelli Street. Oh yes, the Corticelli, thank you. Thank you so much. Yep. Okay. Um, we also have exemptions that we received uh, we have two grants for the, our resident service coordinator, uh, grants of 60,000 each. Um, one was a, what we used to call the mixed population grant. They, they've now reclassified that as the RSC grant um, and that's 60,000. And we also are receiving additional funds for maintenance of the mini splits that have been installed. Um, and that's $68,700. And that goes immediately to our uh, contract cost for maintenance on that. Um, so you'll see this calculation when we estimate our revenue. Our estimated subsidy is two million one twenty two three fifty nine uh, for the upcoming year. Okay, and so that calculation goes back, and you'll see that number right here up on our subsidy on our revenue side of the budget two million one twenty two three fifty nine. Now. 
The other thing that I point out here is the comparison of the PUM, which is per unit month from one year to the next. And um, obviously some of them are smaller increases, maybe a small decrease. Uh, but the main thing right here, you're going to see our other revenue, other revenue non-subsidy related uh, goes from 18 to 102. And I think you heard uh, your executive director indicate that we received um, a grant for the, in, the um, installation of the mini splits that can be received back and used within the authority. And that's where that 631,000 represents a good portion of that grant. Um, Excuse me, can you tell me what page you're on, please? Because I can't see it at the very top. You can't see the, this is page one of 19, I'm sorry. This is Very still on page one. Okay, thank you. Yep, yep. And and that's this is that line, um, the 631,000. Okay. That's the receipt of that grant that we, we received. Um, and what that does is that allows us the money into our operating reserve that does not, it does not reduce the subsidy that we would get from the state and allows us to budget those items for repair. The majority of that is going to be replenishment of our operating reserves and also the continuation of what the housing authority has been doing is a lot of substantial uh, flooring renovation at the units. Um, I don't know if if uh, Carol, our executive director, wants to comment on that because it's we've been it's been an active uh, project. Yeah, many of the many of the units here um, still have original flooring um, from built or asbestos flooring um, and tiles are popping or lifting or um, uh, just absolutely needing replacement. Um, the agency has limped along, residents have limped along. Um, and as we're turning over units, uh, we've been having to um, deal with the asbestos flooring um, and either encapsulate or completely remove um, and replace. Um, so that's, uh, you know, in prior years, we were able to do that, you know, for uh, maybe up to $2,500 a unit. Uh, now we're having to do that uh, at a cost of anywhere from $2,500 a unit to $6,500 a unit, depending on the number of bedrooms um, based upon, you know, the, the increase in, in cost of product <clears throat> and labor as well. <clears throat> um, and so um, we're just not able to salvage as many as we used to be able to salvage. And so uh, since we were able to uh, get these funds via the grant that we applied for, um, you know, it's better while we can to make the, do the rep replacements on turnover as we need them. And so that's what we've been doing. Um, Madam as Chair, we... a question for the ED. Sorry to interrupt about this. I'm sorry, what is that? I said I have a question for the ED regarding this. Regarding the floors? Yeah, yes. Uh, go ahead. Yes, Um. I first, if it would be helpful if you could tell me what number you're on or what uh, count so I could follow along with you. I'm very enthralled with this. But my question is, you say upon turnover, what about the people who've been living here? If I'm and now I'm nervous about asbestos because I've never had these floors done since I've been here and that's 10 years. So I think it's a great thing, but it's upon turnover. What about the existing people who've been here? I've been here 10 years, other people have been here 15, 20 years. They're Some living the, like the, the, the unit the buildings are full of asbestos. The oh, any, any building built prior to a certain time has asbestos in it. As long as it's not disturbed, it's not a problem. So uh, please don't let the word asbestos um, get you in a panic. Um, so asbestos products were used up until um, uh, up until the uh, late seventies. So um, it's just also, a matter. I, I would ask. I would ask the direct, I mean, really, what we're talking about is the budgeted items here. Right. And this separate question. So maybe that's a question that we could look into for for Commissioner Tarbutton regarding. Um, the, um, 
regarding the turnover versus the non turned over and when those are, but not at this time, perhaps we can bring yeah. that. I do agree with that, but I do thank her for saying that about this best us and that, that part I understood. But my question is, what does it mean when it's turned up? You have empty ones, you're right here. So I would like for this to be a further conversation. Maybe we could put this on the agenda for next time to cover that. I do appreciate that. Would you be able to just answer that question? Tur Tur turnover that? turnover yeah. is uh, if next it's time rather than this time. You, to you let Gary wanna... continue with the budget because we're detracting from the budgeted um, focus of this particular. Is that okay? Or so tur you... turnover is is you know when if a unit has uh, a, a move out has occurred and it hasn't been done or it can't be salvaged, um, some sometimes it is a flooring that is occupied. So it's not just done on turnover. This also may occur in a unit where someone is is currently living but most often we see this in a unit that is a turnover i hope that clarification helps it, it is but i i've had it asked for help 10 years i know other people so yeah okay i don't Thank think you. this budget conversation though is about you specifically um commissioner tarbutton yeah i'm not talking more around. so about myself i can cover it up but i just talking about other residents who've been here longer but thank you i appreciate it um, I'll yeah. continue. So, yes, what we're basically saying is that we're going to be able to fund the ongoing um, redevelopment of our units and the flooring project. And as we look, if we go down to this extraordinary maintenance line item, that's where $200,000 is being budgeted. And that's really <laughs> funding the uh, turnover of the flooring. And then I also indicated that a majority of this grant is also going to go into replenishing of operating reserves. And you'll see this bottom line, we're saying that we are actually have a surplus budget uh, proposal for the 400. And as I scroll down, which is the most important as we get down to the actual operating reserve, here's where on page seven of 19, uh, our reserve level. Could you just You'll see us again the 400C just for folks who've lost track? The 400C is our state aided uh, 515 units. It's not the whole program, but it is it is the state aided units. Thank you. We have a maximum reserve of 2,227,655, minimum reserve 445,531. The actual operating reserve at the end of our last fiscal year, which was June 30th of 2024, um, was $899,350. Um, with the anticipation of this, uh, what I would call augmenting our reserves, 616, 629, it's going to get our reserves to 68%. Uh, we had been um, depleting our reserves and not, I shouldn't say depleting it, randomly we've done it uh, on a budgeted uh, sense but this brings us back our reserves to what i consider quite healthy somewhere between 50 and 70 percent um, which allows us uh, funds for actually if it's a continuation of whatever program for maintenance or extraordinary maintenance in the future um, so that's that's the planned program for the 400 as I go forward on the 689 program, which is our special needs housing, um, this is also a program that I think the last time I spoke to you about, I was concerned about the operating reserve. And that being that um, the reserves were getting low. And since we do not receive a subsidy on this program, it's based upon the revenue we generate from the rents, which is the 104,000. We also are receiving part of that grant that was talked about in terms of into this program um, so that the allocation cost as we look, go forward to the operating reserve for the 689 or special needs, you'll see that our reserve was dropping down to 17,197 at the end of our last fiscal year. We're going to be able to supplement that and get that up back to 93,228. Um, it says 137%, but the numbers indicate that this program um, doesn't have a maximum, 
but yet it gets our reserves back to a very manageable sense for the 689 program. Um, so that's why this whole budgetary process maneuvers our finances to get to a, a healthy state. Our MRVP program, which is Mass Rental Voucher Program, is the rental assistance of our state side. It's equal to the Section 8 program. Uh, the main differences there is we're receiving now an admin fee of instead of $50 per unit that we administer, $55. We only have 10 units. That's not, it's a very small program. Uh, so what we do is we have $6,600 of administrative revenue that we get to use to allocate our expenses. And our, those expenses are uh, primarily a pro 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 proportion of our admin salaries and administrative expenses. Um, are coming you down on page to, eight? Where are you, sir? Please. I Don't am you. page 12 of 19. Okay. Okay. Um, that particular program, uh, we're looking at a $482 deficit in our plan. But as we go forward, and you'll see our operating reserve for that program is at, right now we are at $4,069. Uh, we're saying that we're going to take $482 out of that or be at $3,587. Again, a very small proportion of our overall budget. Um, those are the three budgets where you'll be but, uh, voting on resolutions on which submit this budget to, um, to Boston for approval. The other programs which I'm gonna talk about is the, all the, the other programs which represent a portion of our budgets. Um, and this is page where the internal budget, I think the actual page 15 of 19. This represents the um, portion of our budgets which are internal to us meaning they're not outside approval budgets that require uh, HUD either approval or um, Boston, but does require um, disclosure to you. The first is our Section 8 program. And again, these are the line items that are allocated to those programs uh, with our estimated revenue, meaning the estimated admin fees that we receive from the program. So for this upcoming year, we're saying we 1,278,153 of our expenses compared to 1,282 of revenue. Uh, we'll have a $3,847 surplus. Um, our estimated reserve level, our operating reserve as of 7,124, and this is net. Remember, I, I try to make sure I say net of our GASB liabilities is. 1,779,930. So we're estimating our reserve to be at 1,783,777. You will see that with our net, our actual GASB unfunded liability is 2,559,338. So those two comparisons, if we were had to, if we had to look at our unfunded liabilities, we're probably in a deficit of about uh, 500, well, actually about $700,000. Um, but we do not have that concern at this point because there is no mandates to fund this unfunded liability. We have been um, funding it as we've gone. The other part we have, we have a management account. This represents a budget of what we get for management fees. We are managing East Hampton and Hatfield at an annual figures of what we get. Um, revenue on that program is estimated at 220,653. We are budgeting to spend 220,555, which would leave a $98 surplus. Again, what is we don't other? Need to... what's Pardon? the other the other management fee East Hampton, management fee yeah. Hatfield, and what's other? The other billings that we bill East Hampton or Hatfield um, for other services other than administrative. Let's say our um, maintenance men go out and do a service call for East Hampton. That's a billing that's an add-on. So that's why it's, it's put as other revenue to the management program. 
Um, so what happens is when that's billed out, that's also becomes income to the Northampton through the management fund and becomes an expense to either Hatfield or uh, East Hampton. Does that is that answer that question for you? Yeah, you said there's a fees for NHA. All right, so, but these are not but fees. We have, we have management fees for East Hampton and Hatfield, which are that I know. It's a straight management fee. And, and that's is that going to? Is that from the? Is that for NHA or for the ED? I'm right. just like may, may, may I interject for a second, Gary? I think you've yep. already cleared it up. You said that the management fee that's listed that says East Hampton and Hatfield refer to the administrative costs. Yes. Versus yes. the other, which are, for example, maintenance is what Gary said. Right, right. And those top two lines that say East Hampton and Hatfield refer to administrative management, and the other is other than administrative, such as maintenance. Exactly. And that, that we don't have a solid amount on because you never know how much time uh, we, we would go up there and support them. Um, again, it's for backup support for those uh, housing authorities. Um, so, so a good example on that is when our snow was over and East Hampton needed help because their guy had COVID and their other guy sliced his finger off and our guys volunteered to go and help. We didn't do that for free. Northampton guys volunteered and then Northampton build them. So we made income from that. Northampton Housing Authority made income by building the East Hampton Housing Authority. Uh, not only did we save the day, but we made a dollar doing so. Oh, perfect. Exactly. Thanks for that. Did you get, did we make fee when we went to the uh, school and put a lock in there? Did we charge for that or was that just gratis? Um, that was gratis. Okay. We don't have a, con that, that's a, I understand your concern, Commissioner Tarbutton, but it's not related to the management discussion that we're having. And um, I think it's not really relevant to this discussion. Well, I, I was inquiring about it. You put me here and you answered a question and I just asked for clarification. If you say it's not relevant, but then that's on you. Yes, because this is referring to the management contracts that we have. The yeah, that's what I thought I was asking. Yeah. Thank um, you. We still have, and within our budget, we have a special projects account. Uh, there is no planned expenditures from that this year. Uh, that is something that if if you remember in the past, we've had requested special board vote to use any of that. We generate an estimated income of $8,000. Uh, that current number is 211039 with estimated income of eight to leave it next year at 219039. And again, that's a special projects account and any expenditures out of that uh, do go through the board. Also with our laundry fund, we have, we have a laundry fund because we own our own washers and dryers. The current balance of the laundry fund was 37,601. Estimated income of 16,000, which is one half of the revenue of the, of the amount we take in goes into that account and possible use for that would be community room updates and projects for the tenants to leave a balance of 28,601. Excuse um, me, so you're saying that the uh, estimated income from the laundry fund, so that is, is that basically telling you how much money is made from the laundry for, I don't know what building that is. We, is that that's overall? the overall um, laundry between our either our state units or uh, basically our state units only because our federal units go right to the federal program for the for the washers and dryer income uh, for the income for the state programs 16,000 is rep representing half of what we probably take in on a, on a monthly basis you get a report monthly of the of the laundry deposits on the treasurer's report mm. um, but this is a yearly budget that we have so I would say based upon what I estimated here is that we take in probably about $32,000 a year in total um, revenue from the laundry rooms. Uh, half of that goes to pay for our utilities and the other half goes into this laundry fund for use, both for repairs and community room updates or whatever. Uh, new, that's why purchase, I said, of new, purchase of new equipment and repairs yep. to current equipment as well. 
Right. So you said this is getting to the treasurer's report. Is this the warrant that we have? That's not the warrant. I, I don't know how often we see the treasurer's report. Every treasurer's month. report is a monthly report. Yep. It's given to the, uh, the rest, all of us uh, board members? I believe so. Am I correct? That's on the financial reports on the monthly, Joella. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, so anyways, page 16 of the budget is just the breakdown of percentages that we have for our allocations. And then we get into page 17, which is our federal operating budget. Um, again, what when we talked about earlier that we are a high performer in HUD's eyes, we do not have to submit this to Housing and Urban Development for approval. It's an internal um, because we are a high performer. I will tell you in the case of our federal projects that I'm gonna go all the way to the last page, which is the main thing, is our operating reserve. Um, you'll see right here, this would be our estimated uh, operating reserve requirement, which is 728,415. And we are actually looking at our estimated uh, budget at 1,211,950. Um, so substantially, we are well-funded in our federal project. Um, and, and again, a lot of that, we have a capital fund, which we take care of our federal projects through that. There are uh, items that are happening there. Um, so, the up this budget for the year um, is very good for the Northampton Housing Authority. It provides us with resources that we need, and it's also being submitted within the budget guidelines um, that Boston submits to us. So I know that we we submitted this out um, early so that you could review it, and we asked if there were any specific questions to be given to us. Uh, ahead of time by last Friday, so I could have reviewed. But if you have any questions that I might be able to answer briefly, uh, I'll entertain that. Otherwise, I would uh, recommend we move the budgets. I, I do have just one question. I so appreciate you putting this up on the big screen so my eyes don't have to get headaches. Yeah. So I appreciate that. Is there any way since this is, um, can that be emailed to uh, tenants? I mean, to uh, uh, the commissioners as well. It's just a. It's I, think just, it, I think it was. No, we well, sent my, well, maybe unless we've blown it up. Yeah, it was email, but mine is tiny, whiny, whiny, whiny. <laughs> so, but anyway, that's oh, that's well, all I was asking. Uh, I, I need well, the, uh, the large yeah. font. Huh? I believe uh, your direct executive director mailed that out to you on the. Yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, not it in time. On your own device, when you're looking at it on your own device. You just have to zoom in to do. Oh yes, very yes. Zoomed in No, right. I I don't have that access because of the computer issue. So I've been having to put it into my packet. I like to have a little mm -hmm. bit of both, but I just yeah, didn't you know. Don't you have a way to zoom it and then print it in that way, okay. because it would be it would take. I, I, don't I don't have access yet. But hopefully that be my printer couldn't print it that big, but. Um, uh, I get it. Uh, anyways, no, I, I I think this was great, and I just want to thank you. This has been very thorough. Um, I just my only question I had is um, if when you're talking about NHA, is, does that also include, uh, what is that? Uh, uh, not Hatfield, uh, what is those places that we have? Cummington and Huntington? Yes, is, yes. That's, that's also that's included. All part of the 515 units, our 400C program. That, I, that I includes it. the ones that we've taken on up in Cummington and Huntington. Yeah, it would be nice if they were separate, but if they're all included, they're all included. So thank you. Thank you. Yep. I'm beginning to understand everything you say. Well, not everything, but thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, Madam Chair, would you like me to read the resolution? Yes, please. Um, if you read the resolution, then I can ask for more. Actually, so, so that you don't have to do it twice. Why don't I ask then first for a motion from the floor? Well, we'll do it as you said. Read the resolution, then I'll ask for a motion, and then we'll um, take it from there. Okay. Resolution number 2024-08, approval of the FY25 budget for all programs. Whereas the Northampton Housing Authority wishes to submit budgets as presented by fee accountant Gary DePace and as indicated below for each program. 
annual operating budget for state aided program 401 for fiscal year 2025. The proposed operating budget for state aided family and elderly housing of the Northampton Housing Authority chapters 200, 667, and 705, program number 400-1, for fiscal year ending June 30th, 2025, showing a total revenue of $5,071,939 and total operating expenditures of $4,455,310, thereby requesting a subsidy of $2 $122,359 be submitted to the Department of Housing and Community Development for its new, uh, for its review and approval. Annual operating budget for state aided program 689C for fiscal year 2025. The proposed operating budget for state aided family housing for the Northampton Housing Authority program number 689C for fiscal year ending June 30th, 2025 showing a total revenue of $212,150 and a total operating expenditure of 136,119, thereby requesting a subsidy of zero be submitted to the Department of Housing and Community Development for its review and approval. An annual operating budget for state-aided MRVP program for fiscal year 2025. The proposed operating budget for state-aided family housing of the Northampton Housing Authority MRVP program for fiscal year ending June 30th, 2024, showing total revenue of $89,615 and a total operating expenditure of $90,097, thereby requesting zero subsidy be submitted to the Department of Housing and Community De Development for its review and approval. Annual operating budget for the federal programs for fiscal year 2025 as initial submission. Therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners of the Northampton Housing Authority does hereby approve the 401, 689C, MRVP, and federal budget for fiscal year 2025, and further that the executive director's total annual salary of 206410, which includes $33,618 in management fees from the Hatfield Housing Authority and East Hampton Housing Authority's management contracts. Further, that the authority and the executive director in their name shall be authorized on and after the passing of this resolution to do and perform on behalf of the authority all acts and things required of the authority to perform fully all obligations of the budget, including electronic signatures on all required forms, and be it resolved that this resolution shall take effect immediately. Thank you. So may I please have a motion to approve from the floor? Oh, motion to approve. Thank you, Commissioner Brooks. And may I please have a second? Second. Moved and seconded. Okay, then I think we can move on since we've had discussion. Uh, we'll move forward with this uh, with a roll call, please. Yes, resolution 2024-08, Chairperson Carney. Yes. Vice Chairperson Richards, thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Tarbutton Springfield. I'm, I'm going to abstain. I'd like to see the treasurer's report, warrants. I have a lot more I'd like to see, but this has been the best yet. So, but I'll abstain. Thank so you. it will pass. Thank you. And Madam Chair, with four yeas and one abstention, motion passed, carries. Thank you. Okay, that motion carries. So, does that bring us then to that item that we had skipped over? Um, back to the board review of the grievance. I think that that is where we're at now, right? Because we've otherwise reached the end of our agenda. No, 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 no. Yeah. You have uh, the least. financials. You have the flat rents. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Then move move forward. I I don't have my agenda fully open here. So, okay. Move um, forward then. So, would you like me to go backwards or forwards? Uh, move forward, please, because we said that sure. we would wait until we would give the grievance as much time as we're here. So. If we're here for further business, let's take care of that in the hopes that the grievance will show up. So the next item is the first quarter, which is November financials, which um, Gary DePace uh, prepared. Um, and we just have to certify the quarterly operating statements uh, for each of the programs um, with the quarter ending 11-1-24. Uh, Gary, is there anything that the board needs to specifically understand with these um, financials? 
Yeah, no, this is the first quarter of the fiscal year. I just wanted to point out that these uh, represent financials that are still showing the last year's budget carry forward. Uh, it does not include these new budget numbers that you've just approved, uh, but the next quarterly report and your next financials that you get for uh, the month of October will have these updated budget numbers in there. And, and I think um, we, are, we are spending uh, currently in the first three months actually under budget. Uh, and when we submit the new budget numbers, there's, there's a lot of things that uh, can be done. So that's basically the only thing I needed to say. Okay, then we'll need just a, um, a motion from the floor then to approve these. Motion to approve. Thank you, Commissioner Brooks. Is there a second, please? Second. Okay, moved and seconded. And I think you can move forward then, Director Leeper. Yep, Ex uh, motion to accept the first quarter November financials prepared by fair, uh, fee accountant Gary DePace, Chairperson Carney. Yes. Thank you, Vice Chairperson Richards. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Jones. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Tarbutton Springfield. I had a question, so I'm going to say no. I have to get a chest to answer it. Thank you. Commissioner Cancel is absent. Madam Chair, with four yeas and one nay. That motion carries then. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, your next item is the FY 2025 federal flat rents. Um, so annually, uh, HUD regulations and uh, Northampton Housing Authority policy provides that families may choose to pay either rent based upon the income of the family, which includes the minimum rent if applicable, or rent based on a ceiling or flat rent, which is maximum rent charged to a family. The rate is determined by rents in Northampton for similarly sized apartments with similar amenities and the cost of operating the development. Uh, the current flat rents uh, for a one-bedroom are $1,115 and a two-bedroom $1,375 at McDonald House. And at Florence Heights, a two-bedroom is $1,375, a three-bedroom is $1,669, and a four-bedroom is $1,954. Um, where the flat rents are looking to be raised um, at McDonald House, $90 um, for a one-bedroom $121 for a two bedroom and $121 for a two bedroom at Florence Heights, $154 for a three bedroom at uh, Florence Heights, and $83 for a four bedroom. Uh, utility allowances are provided to residents at Florence Heights, and residents choose to pay the flat rent will not uh, be required to have an annual recertification of their income, but each year the flat rent may change. Residents then may opt for the other rent calculation method at any time um, based on any changing um, family circumstances. Um, and so we must annually adopt new flat rents. Um, so the new flat rents would be 12 at McDonald, 1205 and 1496 respectively. And then Florence Heights would be 1496, 1823 and $2,037. Um, okay. And it requires board approval. Yes, and Commissioner Tarbutton has a question, Director. Yes, I know we're talking about uh, 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 HUD with uh, McDonald's and um, Lawrence. I just guess my question would be, how does one go uh, from to go into uh, to Florence? Because it's Florence, is it federal? It's federal. So I would assume that if Florence is a family housing, people who go there would have families. Is that correct? No, not not necessarily. Not necessarily. Yeah, the majority depends. of people there have families. It's well, called family housing, but I think that's what I thought. So yeah, that's what I mean. That's not what necessarily be related. No, yeah. so so Flor McDonald is not family housing. I know Florence, Florence Heights. You yeah. can't call it family housing because that would be a fair housing violation. Uh, it is uh, federal housing. It has two, three, and four bedrooms. A single person could qualify for a two-bedroom apartment if they had a reasonable accommodation that their medical provider um, would signify that they are in necessity of. Mm -hmm. So you can't 
say that it is a family property and only families can live there. That's discrimination. Thank you for that. Because I do know that there are two bedroom apartments in McDonald's house. I do know that. But yeah. I've often heard, and maybe it's somewhere because I did see it, family housing when it came to Florence. So that's good. And yeah. I do appreciate us trying to use language that is more inclusive and not discriminatory. I'm just uh, 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 confused, especially how is it a person can move into a two bedroom apartment without family. But if it's I, I'm asking for some clarity. So thank you for this. And it is so well put out on this, guys. I have to tell you, the color, coding, and everything. Excellent job with this. Thank you. Are there any other questions for Director Leeper? Or I'll actually need to have a motion from the floor to um, approve this resolution. Uh, motion to approve. Thank Second. you. Moved and seconded. And I'll just ask one more time. Any other commissioners have another clarification they need or concern to raise? Otherwise, I'll ask the director to go ahead and call the roll, please. Yes. Uh, motion to approve the fiscal year 2025 federal flat rents. Chairperson Carney. Yes. Thank you. Vice Chairperson Richards. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Tarbutton Springfield. I'm going to say no. Some major concerns with people being placed, and I have questions with that. Thank you. Okay. Com and Commissioner Cancel is absent. Madam Chair, with four yeas and one nay, one absent, the motion carries. Yes, thank you. Okay, then that brings us, I think, to the final new business, the presentation on the performance management review, and that would go, please, to Director Leeper to explain. Okay. Just one moment, please. Let me get caught up. Okay, I am um, super happy to um, let the board know that on November 12th, um, 2024, we received our performance management review results and we received very high marks. Um, in addition to the federal side on the state side, we had no findings, absolutely none. Um, we had the criteria of occupancy rate, tenants accounts receivable, board member training, certifications and report submissions, annual plan, adjusted net income, operating reserves, all no findings. And that is for all programs, 667, 705, 200, and cumulative. Then <clears throat> our occupancy rate was reviewed. <clears throat> tenants accounts receivable, no findings. Um, vacancy submissions, operating statements, no findings, um, adjusted net income, no findings, occupancy on all three programs, no findings, um, operating reserves, no findings. In addition to that, uh, Chad Howard, uh, went and, uh, chose they choose a percentage of units, a random percentage of units on all programs, and they go and physically inspect. Uh, they found no findings. Um, the CFA submission, no findings. Uh, CHAMP criteria, uh, no recommendations on criteria 1A, 1B, 1C. We had operational guidance on ensuring that the vacancies were put into the uh, EOHLC housing uh, system within 30 days of the vacancy rate. And uh, that was because um, I was on medical leave and I uh, did it on the 31st day rather than by the 30th day. Um, but that was not a um, finding, nor was it a corrective action. It was just operational guidance. Um, no findings on 3A, no findings on 3B or 3C or recommendations, no findings um, on um, physical condition reports um, and uh, the turnovers, the work order turnovers, no findings there. There were a couple of health and safety issues where, for example, a resident had taken down uh, the batteries out of a smoke detector. Um, we're required to fix those um, within 24 to 48 hours. We fixed those while we were uh, during the inspection um, and completed those work orders. Um, and so uh, 
I'm sure you received a copy of the letter, um, but we did an impeccable job on the um, PMR. And I'd like to thank and congratulate the staff for all of the hard work that it took to, um, to make sure that that happened. And it's hard work that they do every single day, not hard work that they just scramble around to do just to pass this. So thank you, staff. I appreciate it. Thank uh, you, Director. Uh, uh, before, before I turn to before I turn to uh, Commissioner Tarbutton for her questions or comments, I also want to um, thank the staff and thank Director Lieber. And I have one question: Do, it, it, There isn't a. Does the board need to vote on this, accepting this report or anything? No. Okay, then I'll, I will allow for board uh, comments or congratulations as they're being offered. Yes, Commissioner Tarbutton. Yes, uh, I saw the uh, executive director reading from something and I was trying to find where it was and I didn't know, was that from an email or from the actual packet that you had? Um, so I had a question that I did see some letters that got from Carolina Gonzalez, but I was trying to follow, follow that. Well, there was part of your packet was the performance management review results. Okay, yeah, I, you were going quite fast. So I wanted to make sure I, I followed along. Um, so, yeah, I don't, I don't see that. I'm, oh, I, okay, yeah. Okay, and Commissioner Richards, and then I also see well, Commissioner Richards. Yes, yes, go ahead. I just wanted to say I read the report and absolutely amazing. And it's very complicated, very hard thing. <laughs> and, um, we just really shown above all others, I think. And I just wanted to thank Kara, number one, and the staff, uh, number two. Quite amazing work by teamwork by everyone. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you. Um, Marilyn. And, and this is a biennial uh, review now. And so it doesn't happen every year. Just I, I know that uh, someone had commented and I uh, want to let the board know. So this is a published, uh, it's published um, when it's done. And so it will be published and, um, but it's not something that occurs every year. So just so that you know. So we can expect this though, again, in two years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Um, I think then that brings us to the end of the agenda, which would, I would hope, and do we see that maybe the grievant has not in the waiting room or not here? No, he's not in the waiting room. Okay, then I'll ask then Commissioner Richards to move forward with the um, with the review from the grievance committee. I don't have it. Yes, thank you. Thank you so very much. And what I want to report is <laughs> uh, the grievance committee met on Thursday, September the 19th at the Joseph McDonald House Conference Room at 1 p.m. It was a Zoom meeting and in attendance were uh, Dr. Jessica, Jessica Bossy, who is an impar impartial member, myself, a commissioner, and uh, Mr. James Brooks Tennant, a uh, federal uh, elderly and disabled commissioner, uh, so we met and we heard uh, Mr. Punch. And um, while our, our sympathies were with him, we ruled in favor of uh, our understanding of the regulation and the law, uh, which was in favor of the Housing Authority. It was unanimous. And uh, that's where we sit right now. Mr. Punch has uh, decided to bring it forward for more discussion to the board, which is absolutely his right. So um, just to bring it forward, I would uh, open the um, grievance hearing by uh, Marvin Punch, Melvin Punch, sorry, uh, to the full board. And um, I would probably turn it over to Director Leeper and Attorney O'Connor for any more explanation on what our role is and how we should conduct ourselves. Okay. Attorney O'Connor or Director Leeper? Um, I think that <clears throat> the letter that I generated to you all on November 12th um, did a good job summarizing it. 
but in case uh in case uh there are some of you that didn't get a chance to read it um and because it's a public hearing i think attorney o'connor will agree that i should probably read it into the record okay. um yes just so there's some factual basis for what the board is considering because as it stands right now there's nothing on the record regarding right. what the board is actually considering and in terms of logistics um once we've heard this <clears throat> this letter read into the record it will be upon the board then to um to I mean, either hold the grievance committee or or um what would be the other term not uphold yeah, it so you your 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 only options are to uphold, set aside, or modify the grievance panel's decision. Okay, so um, we'll ask. I'll ask for a motion when you're done with the reading, and then I'll, I'll um, turn it to the to the board for a vote. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, so dear commissioners, uh, Mr. Melvin Punch is a resident of Cahill. Jack Redmond moved him in on October 18th of 2021. At that time, his rent was calculated at $711 per month with income of $29,352. His October 1st, 2022 recertification process with Caitlin Hanning changed his rent to $896 due to income of $36,536. His October 1st, 23 recertification process with Amanda Huertas changed his rent to $974 based upon income of $38,000. $938. Sometime during one of these processes, it was found that there was a significant income that was not reported and that he had been getting this income since well before he moved in. Rather than retroactively calculate and create a huge burden of thousands of dollars owed to us, I instructed staff to make the correction going forward rather than doing a retroactive rent redetermination. Mr. Punch began meeting with various staff stating that his rent was not calculated properly and would not take the information in the regulation in that we must include the income in the calculation of his rent. To give Mr. Punch the benefit, we reached out to our management representative at the um, EOHLC, provided his documentation to them and asked for clarification on the regulation because of his interpretation of the language and if the income should be excluded or included. While we awaited their answer, we told Mr. Punch to continue to pay his old amount of rent until we found out a definitive answer. He was uh, incessantly calling all of the property managers at each property, even though he lives at Cahill. He was also calling EOHLC, the front desk, and even though we kept telling him that we were waiting on the answer from the state, and asking him to be patient that we were trying to get an, an official answer. Um, we scheduled an, an informal settlement conference with him because he kept saying to everyone that he had asked for a grievance hearing, although he had not asked for a grievance hearing. So we, settled, we scheduled an informal settlement conference um, with myself and Jack Redman and Mr. Punch. And on September 12th, the decision was sent to him after reviewing all of the evidence. I provided him with the information that had come back from the state, um, which was in accordance with the regulations that we must include the income in the calculation. Um, the uh, the attached informal, I, I included that document, the emails, the regulation, I highlighted everything that he, he thought that his, um, a workman's comp um, income should not be included in his uh, rent determination. Um, so we notified him that we were required to include that income. Um, I then um, uh, in that decision, based upon uh, his parting statement that he would be filing an MCAD complaint and wanting a grievance hearing, although he had not properly done so in writing, I scheduled a hearing with the hearing panel. Mr. Punch was notified on November uh, September 12th that the hearing panel would see him on September 19th at 1 p.m. The hearing was held. During the hearing, Mr. Punch advocated for the exclusion of his annuity income from the gross household income. 
The Housing Authority provided evidence supporting the decision to include the income based on the requirements set forth in 760 CMR. This is written out in number two of the informal settlement conference decision. The panel found that the language of the CMR does not permit an exclusion for this type of income he receives. Their decision was based solely on regulatory requirement. On October 9th, I got a voicemail from Mr. Punch wherein he stated we were not in compliance with a determination. I called him back and notified him that I had sent an email to him with the panel's decision on September 23rd at, at 2.11 p.m. He opened his email and found it. Mr. Punch had 14 days to request this re be reviewed by the board, which would have been October 7th. On October 9th, I received another call from him. I then got a request in writing. Although his request states that we did not notify him in writing, email has been his preferred method of contact as shown in his communications with EOHLC. Furthermore, he states that the decision of the hearing panel was, quote, not supported by facts and that, quote, their decision does not correctly apply applicable law, regulation, rules, and policies, end quote, is not correct. Please note that although he had he was two days late in making his request in accordance with the policy. I thought it best to allow this to go before the full board to allow for due process. The board should have heard from Mr. Punch tonight, the person who claimed chaired the hearing panel and the housing authority. Once it's done, the board can only vote to uphold, set aside, or modify the decision already made by the panel. If the board votes to uphold the panel's decision, it ends there. If the board sets aside, modifies the panel's decision, then Mr. Punch or the Housing Authority could appeal to EOHLC. Please note that Mr. Punch has already prematurely requested that. Um, I will then be required to send him whatever your decision is within 45 days. Um, also, there has also been a um, suit filed by Mr. Punch. Uh, so, that's the supporting documents. If anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. I'll open it up then to commissioners for some questions. Yes, Commissioner Tarbutton. Uh, sure. I, I I guess I have uh, several questions. I'm trying to make sure I, I get them. I, I guess my question is, when did a case be uh, was filed with MCAD? I'm sorry, what did you say? Did he file a case also from this with MCAD, Mass Commission Against the Discrimination? And what date did that happen? Attorney O'Connor? It's late October. I don't know the exact date. For some reason, the 28th is ringing bells, but late October. Of, of, of this year? Yeah, just recently. Okay, because I know it all began a bit officially in 221, from what uh, I, I could understand. My question is, well, I no, guess he, he stated in this in the very first meeting with us that he felt we were doing this um, as a discriminatory practice against his disability and that he was going to file an MCAD complaint before we even told him what the decision was. So he told us that he was going to file the MCAD complaint before he even filed it, but he just filed it recently. So along that lines, I assume that he's elderly and I'm just wondering, I don't know much about it because I just beginning to learn about this. Was he eligible for an <clears throat> elderly income exclusion? This has nothing to do with his elderly exclusion. Okay, I'm, I'm just asking. Uh, and I just also wanna say, I'm not so in, in uh, cahoots, I guess, uh, in agreement that uh, the grievance panel is fair, impartial, independent, blah, 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 blah. Because um, one thing I do remember saying this, and I did bring this up to the chair um, uh, at one time, is the, for example, according to law in the PHN, um, and EOLC, that notices of grievance flyers should be available in all common areas on all properties. And I had never seen it in the 10 years that I've been here. So, and then I asked about this and I got an email text that I can refer to that was in 223. And it says, 
I think the ED said, let me quote it, the flyers were being pulled down. So she had them put in her office, I assume for a safekeeping. And so I didn't understand that because at Salvo in particular, we have bull this, boards that are plex. Can I just finish, please? We have bull boards that are plexiglass. Hunch, Madam yes, Ms. because I'm talking about Madam cases Ms. with grievance. Of course. Please, please but, no, one at a time. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. But we have a plexiglass with the key. So notices about what a grievance procedure and flyers should be readily available. So my part is that I'm wondering about that because we have it available. So it doesn't surprise me as a tenant that notification or whatever the case may be, may be an issue with that. So I wish that that was the case so we wouldn't have a problem. So when you go to court or you bring stuff like this, you can say we covered all our bases. Of course, we're complying with all rules, with notification. And I know that the average, I know that the chair said in a minute, she was able to find it on the website. Well, most residents don't have that minute timing or computer uh, savviness to do this. I don't know about him in particular, so I can't say that. So I just, um, I think I'm gonna set aside this because I think that it is as an inherent um, deficit with tenants in dealing with grievance and the grievance panel and all of that stuff. So I don't think that this is, uh, I don't think this is fair to him. So my answer is set aside. If, um, if you read the I documents that were sent, um, Commissioner Tarbutton, in every single I did document, read it, by the way. If, if, you, if you read the documents and every single document that was sent to him, the grievance procedures were written out in every single document. Yeah, I understand. But I'm saying overall, okay. you don't keep grievance policies. So, so, I'll do so it. You're, you don't have that available. Saying, I'm, not gonna, you, I'm not going to allow for a back and forth. Argument. Okay. So I said that, but I, I want you to know I did read this very particular because I'm very interested in that. But in my emails and talking with this, it's not fair. So I'm that's my decision. So I'm not going to try to change your mind on this, but I'm just saying from a tennis standpoint, it doesn't seem fair. Okay, we hear that. Thank you, Commissioner Tarbutton, that your disagreement with um, with uh, upholding this is the, your general disagreement with the way that this agency um, lets tenants know about the grievance policy. That's uh, what well I hear. Yes. Thank okay. you. Thank you. And Commissioner Richards, it's your yes, please. Uh, yes, I just wanted to say that, uh, in all fairness, that's why this is coming before the board tonight, Good. because it is the tenant's right to disagree with the grievance committee and therefore bring it to the board as a whole. So uh, I just want to say that um, the grievance committee did their very best in considering the uh, the law, even though, you know, I think part of us always uh, sympathizes with uh, people's grievances, but we must go by the law and regulation. So okay. that this is his right and it's being heard tonight. And uh, I, uh, and, you know, depending on our decision, he can take it uh, further if he wants, that's his right. And I respect that. Thank you, Commissioner. And um, we've heard now from Commissioners Tarbutton and Commissioner Richards. And are there other commissioners who have something to say before? And I know that I know that Attorney O'Connor would like to say something. But I'll just ask if anything from Commissioner Jones or Commissioner Brooks regarding this. Then yes, please, Attorney O'Connor. Oh, wait, I'm sorry, Commissioner Jones. I see a hand. Um. <clears throat> I mean, I I read all the materials. I studied them. I didn't I didn't do a quick read. Um, the strength of the decision is that they uh, the committee um, sent it back for to uh, EOHLC and asked for an opinion. Hmm. So this is a decision that wasn't made solely by. The grievance committee of the Northampton Housing Authority. They asked for outside support. They asked for a legal interpretation. Um, I don't know what Attorney O'Connor is going to say, but um, I think I think um, the the decision was so clearly spelled out in some of the correspondence that they actually color coded it. They put some in yellow and they put some in blue. And anybody on the board could read that. So I think it's pretty clear 
um, that the way the law is currently structured and one can debate um, the law, uh, but that's something for another another meeting, not this one. This is a, this is for an interpretation of a ruling based on the existing law. <clears throat> and I think um, that I basically um, support the decision of the Grievance Committee, and I'll leave it there. Thank you, Commissioner Jones. <clears throat> yes, Attorney O'Connor, please. Sure, just a couple things. The issue on uh, the grievance policy and, and notice to tenants, it's clear as a bell that Mr. Punch knew the grievance process, fully exercised his rights to a grievance hearing, and continues to exercise his rights under the lease with respect to you know a hearing here. And um, he, he clearly knew about his rights that he had under the grievance policy. That's the first point. Second point, I'm going to echo what Commissioner Jones just said, and, and I'm going to use the word clear. Uh, it, the issue here is applying the facts of this case to the regulation, the facts being Mr. Punch gets a monthly annuity that was triggered as a result of a disability he received at work. And the question is, is that annuity includable in terms of the rent calculation? And the regulation couldn't be more clear. It uses the word annuity. Um, but that said, we reached out to EOHLC just to make sure before we made that decision, literally everybody that has looked at this, the senior property manager, Jack Redman, who's no longer with us, of course, his his opinion was it should be included. My opinion was it should be included. The executive director in the informal settlement conference concluded it should be directed or included. Uh, Carolina Gonzalez from H EOHLC it should be included, and then the grievance panel, it should be included. So um, it, it, in my opinion, couldn't be more clear, this income is includable uh, with respect to his income calculation. I fully understand he doesn't want it included, that makes perfect sense to me, but applying the facts to the regulation, there's really only one answer, it has to be included, and it would be unfair to anyone who has other various types of income that they don't want included, that, that gets included because the regulation requires it. The regulation requires that this income be included. The fact that it wasn't in the past, and that was a mistake on our part, doesn't mean it shouldn't be going forward. And the way I suggest that it was handled by the executive director was incredibly fair to Mr. Punch by not pursuing a retroactive payment because I'd suggest we would have been on very good legal footing to do that. Uh, but it was our mistake, our bad. We're not chasing after that back rent. We're just moving forward. So I'd suggest uh, to the to the board that uh, this is this is a clear one. This income should absolutely be included under the regulation. It uses the exact language of what the payment is, a monthly annuity payment. Thank you, Attorney O'Connor. It sounds to me that we have, um, in terms of wording a motion, um, that we're really asked whether to uphold or to set aside. And rather than putting in putting it in those terms, I'll ask if there is a motion from the floor. I still had a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, you have a question. <laughs> uh, well, I, I, I get that. And I did read it. And I did read the whole thing. He's talking about annuity. That's not so much the fairness that I'm talking about. And I do appreciate all the steps. Just like for now, why couldn't we have tabled this? You, I, I like the part about exhausting all possibilities. Could have tabled this and then just tried once again and say, you weren't here. Is something going on? I don't feel comfortable doing that because he's not here. And I do understand the legal ramifications. He had the choice. He got plenty of sample notice. But I'm also, my problem, I guess, with this, and that's, again, that trust factor is what it's like overall. And I have no problems with the merits and the legal merits, but the legal merits also say about notifications about flyers. Who knows if he got an attorney or whatever the case and he learned about this case, but I'm saying in general, we're at a disadvantage. And I think that that needs to be taken in consideration because on one mouth, when there's uh, selling and presentations to management service, it says no grievances. So I'm thinking there's a reason, perhaps. They don't know about it. They're not having access to it. So. I want it all to be above board, above reproach, and that concept of clean hands, I want that to feel comfortable voting. So that's why I'm firmly with setting aside this. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Tarbutt. Now I'll ask if there's a motion, please, from the floor to uphold the decision of the grievance panel. 
Is motion there a second? to uphold. Okay, second. there's been a, a motion by Commissioner Brooks. Is there a second, please? Second. And seconded by Commissioner Jones. Then I'll ask then uh, Director Leeper to please call the roll. Chairperson Carney, motion to uphold the grievance uh, panel decision. Yes. Vice Chairperson Richards. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Commissioner Tarbutton Springfield. No substance over form. Okay, thank you. That motion carries. I think that may then bring us to the end of all of the items on our agenda. Is that correct, uh, Director Leeper? Yeah, we've missed no nothing there. So yes, I do want folks to know that um, as we do let people know this time of year, that the Mana Community Kitchen is offering once again, meals to folks. There's a number that you can call. I don't have that right here. I wish I had the flyer, but I think folks probably received some of that. Um, Director, oops, well, uh, Director Leeper, is, is that true that folks have already received that information about Mana Kitchen? So if you have an interest in uh, having a meal or coming to the dining room at Edwards Church from 12 to 3 on Thanksgiving Day. Um, please join us there for a nice Thanksgiving dinner. And otherwise, I want to wish everybody a happy holiday. I see uh, Commissioner Cancel, I'm sorry, I see you just came in. and uh, I'm sorry that we weren't able to uh, include you here in the meeting because the meeting is just, although you will be here for the final vote, which is a motion to adjourn, if I can have one from the floor, please. Motion. Oh. <laughs> uh, there was a motion to adjourn. I'm hearing a second, probably, in a second. Second. I am moved and seconded. So all in favor of adjourning, please say aye. Aye. Aye, 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 aye. Okay. Good night, Thank you all very much and have a happy holiday. And we'll see you in December. Good night,